You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or their affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, this is Jeff Belanger, author, researcher for Ghost Adventures, host of New England Legends, and of course, beer drinker. And you're listening to PSH Radio with Sam and Carl on the Parasearch Network. They're broadcasting to you from Old England. You can tell by the accents. Good evening, guys. We are back. I know we're a few minutes late, but Skype is, you know, being Skype. But obviously, we're just going to get straight into it so quickly so we can get on air. Well, we're on there anyway. So first off, obviously, as usual, we shall obviously, int- well, I'll introduce Carl as usual, shall I say. <laughs> well, that was a big mouthful for you, Sammy. Good evening. <laughs> we are. All right, so all right, just literally just um, a matter of about 45 minutes ago, walked through the app. So, uh, yeah, all ready to go and, uh, yeah, slightly tired, but I'm, I'm here. It's the weekend tomorrow, so catch up on the sleep I'm missing out on, but all, all good in the hood. That's good then. <laughs> that is good. So obviously, we'll just like obviously just get straight into it. Like I say, guys. So obviously, I shall now welcome Corinne, Alex, Hello. and Lee from the court. Is it the court? Is it the What is it? The court. Paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say the cure. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thinking about the thing, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you all? Anyway. Yeah, we're good, thank you. you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's good to finally obviously talk to you in voice because obviously I talk to Corinne a lot on Facebook. So, How, How's your little breakaway, Corinne, going? Are you back, at, uh, back home? Are you still out and about enjoying Yeah, we're stuff? back now. Yeah, we're back now. We just did um, a little trip to for our anniversary, um, doing some ghost tours and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was nice. We're back now. We got back yesterday. Nice busman's holiday for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so obviously we'll go with like I don't know a bog standard um question. So did you all like meet doing the cut? I keep wanting to say the cut. The cut normal or? So me and the uh, well. group previously called the Wolverhampton Paranormal Research Group. Um, and then, unfortunately, that sort of disbanded a few years um, from the passing of one of our team members. Um, and then, um, a few years later, it started Lee Court Paranormal, and then Alex joined later on. So, yeah, um, yeah. Lee Court is our name sort of kind, so it's Lee Court, Lee and Warren. That's what I'm cool. named. So, um, from, from obviously, you've, you've come from past teams, etc. cetera. Um, so, what, what made you actually interested in the paranormal? Oh my goodness, thank you, you can take this one. Oh, thanks. Um, I've always been interested in it, like, for years and years and years, even way back before the internet, because I'm old, um, getting books from the library and reading stuff, and I thought, well, there must be something in it. And then, pretty much like everybody, having personal experiences, and just thinking, okay, this stuff's real. I want to try and capture stuff. And watching TV shows, and I thought, well, if they go out and these haunted places and capture stuff, why can't we? Mm. So that was it. That's got us into it. Okay, cool. What about yourself and uh, Corinne and Alex? What, what about yourself? What got you into uh, this wonderful field we're all associated with? <laughs> <laughs> well, mine was um, a lot of my family members on my dad's side um, have sort of, I would say, like a gift um, so they can sort of see dead people, pretty much in a nutshell. Always, um, always so helps. Always helps. Yeah, it always helps. <laughs> um, so it kind of spanned from that, really. And I've had a sort of few personal experiences as well, um, seeing things that you know I wasn't sure about as a kid. Um, so that's sort of what got me into it. Um, Alex, what about you? Um, ooh. When I was younger, I got um, I personal experiences, like out of the experiences where I'd be sitting at school but floating above my body type scenarios and uh, and then probably about 20 years ago 
for that when just got invited on to a ghost hunt, enjoyed it and found a group to join and went and did a lot more. So I think that I think that's where most most of us come from. We we yeah. we've all we've all got a like a hidden passion, no matter whether it's on the, the spiritual side or whether it's just you just like scary stories, etc. And you, you, you uh, we all start in the same way where we all go out and we, we go along to our life because I can remember my first one, which um, I, I was always interested, always into the scary stories, etc. And then my friend said, oh, you never guess what's at our local pub, which I live re- literally just around the corner from a village pub. And when they got a ghost done. It's a perfect opportunity for a lock-in. And I'm like, count me in, and went on that and had some weird experiences on that, on, on, on that, and seeing all the equipment, etc. and then it sort of snowballed from there. So I can sense from the way you guys, and obviously I know Alex and Corinne a little bit, and we've investigated and we've worked together. Um, so I can I know that's probably the same reason you guys got, me, got into it. So um, just to give us a quick overview... Give us one of your first ever experiences while doing this. Um, well, while investigating um, as a group or just ever, first ever experience? I would say initially we'll go for individually and then we'll follow up with the next question because you're, ans- you're asking questions that I've got follow up, so that's quite good for a guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll start with the individual and then we'll go with the group. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, my one was um, in a beach at a beach in Cornwall um, with my partner at the time. Um, and we were sitting on this hill. It was like about midnight. I thought, oh, we'll have some drinks. We hadn't even started drinking at this point. And we saw these sort of figures walking towards us from below the hill. And then it turned into like a weird shape. And then it was like about 10 people. Then it was one person. But they were like transparent. Mm. Um, so I sat there. I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. And my partner at the time just sort of freaked out and left me ran and just left me there um so I naturally just like freaked out thought, oh god something's really going on here and just ran I wish I hadn't have run I wish I'd have stayed there and watched it because I wasn't sort of scared until he ran away so yeah um that was one of my sort of first experiences which has stuck with me for a which long time is, which is the whole fear and flight routine which is quite evident evident <laughs> in the paranormal field anyway so yeah what about yourself um, um for, oh apart from like hearing things as a child and that actually doing a ghost hunt um i was at tuckery castle mm-hmm. and there's a room there with a staircase i was sit standing in front of it i just felt like pressure pushing me down to the ground from that mm-hmm. and after a, about 15 minutes i was completely on the floor i couldn't to me i couldn't move and then I, I managed to get myself out of the room and I've been back a few times, had kind of an uneasy feeling and want to go back and kind of conquer that if needed or work out exactly what it was. Now I've like 15 years on, I know a lot more in the research, the what to do rather than the, oh, what's going on. Yeah. So I think I think that's a lot of people because obviously when you first get into it, you 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 are in that whole environment where you are, um, like you say, scared or run situation where you stay or run situation, fear or flight, um, and I think that's where everybody comes into it initially is you have these first experiences which you now look back at when you've obviously been doing it for a few years, and then you realise that. If you'd have done it differently, potentially you could have captured something or you experienced something um, completely different. But everybody starts somewhere. Everybody does it. What about you? What about yourself? Uh, well, my first experience was at a place, um, and I've got kind of doubled where it where it is or where it was, I should say. Um, but the objects being moved, not just a couple of feet, but like you know, a good ten foot through fire doors and stuff where I knew nobody was there. Um, we heard growls, footsteps following us, um, mm. people getting scratched, objects getting thrown, like say. So that was the first sort of, okay, this, yeah, you. this really is real. 
Wow, Lee, you um, really got opened up but if you, first time if, if that's all happening. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was my first sort of like experience of like this stuff is, is scary <laughs> you know, if you're not used to it. Yeah, well, you know, Lee, honestly, that if you're experiencing all that on on your first time, you 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 hit the lottery on that because I know people that have been yeah. there, you know, started their first one. And it's just like being the run of the mill, you know, standing in the dark, calling out and playing around with different yeah. pieces of equipment, etc., and getting nothing. But you, if you got that, you got that sort of stuff. Was that was that a, well, was, was that a public event or was that a private? No, it was. Um, uh... Uh, it was a place where I used to work, um, and a lot of the stuff, I mean, a lot of the stuff was always happening in the daytime, and, you know, there was more than just me witnessing it. It was me and staff witnessing things as well. So uh, that was um, quite scary, yeah. Okay, okay. So, obviously, you, you've, you've had these first experiences. You then Your passion is ignited like most of out, out there does. And then you suddenly you fall back into the normal um, way of doing it as we do. And then you, you, you then suddenly realise your, your path in the paranormal field, whether it's to do with event, public events or whether it's to do with research or videos, etc., etc. So you, you obviously then became a group. Um, and together. So, what what is your the? I've seen <coughs> seen quite a few of your videos, um, and some Thank of you. them, some of them I must admit, um, I've had to scratch my head a few times on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, mm. which we'll come on to a bit later. But um, so, is there any experiences as a group? Because what I can see is you guys work very closely, and it is a small amount. Of, there's usually only you three there. And you work, and obviously, you, your, the whole thing about there is the trust element, and I know that I work with very few teams because you have to be able to trust every single one of them that's there. Um, so there's the trust element because you have to know they, they've got your back and they know how you work, etc. So can you give us some ex- examples of stuff that has gone on for you guys? Don't mention the one uh, uh, with the door, okay? Because we we'll want to that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the stuff. I mean, I'm sure Colin and Alex will back me up on this. A lot of the stuff we capture, we capture when we're looking back through yeah. the videos. It's very, very rare you get anything to happen when you're actually at the place. I think the only thing I can think of, Corin, is me and you at the ski we did the first time. With the the bangs from upstairs. Yeah. Which room was that? Which room? Uh, We were downstairs, (laughs) and um, we just—it was sounded like it came from like directly above us. Um, So in the bar area. uh, At the bottom of the stairs, what by by the hanging rope? Oh, by the by the well. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing directly above you apart from the attic. Yes. And where were the noises? Well, every time we... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, well, every time we sort of says, well, that's it, should we call it a night? We did a cup, like a bang. And at first I was thinking, well, maybe it's a car door shutting, I'm not sure. I'll go up and have a look and come down. And then the final time when I said, that's it, should we call it a night? It sounded like to us, somebody picked up a chair or a table just a, an inch or two off the ground and just dropped it. And I was like, okay, that ain't a car door. That's upstairs. And the most <laughs> annoying thing about that is it, at the time it was so loud, the cameras don't pick it up that loud at all. It sounds like we're being over dramatic, but we're not. It, it was so no, loud. No. Being there. It was, <laughs> this, oh, this was this so is annoying. The, <laughs> this is the thing um, I've experienced is, you, you're in an investigation. You've got a ca- you've got a camcorder. Uh, you've got a camcorder. God, how old am I? You've got a video recorder. You're not. Um, you're, you're using that, and you've obviously got an external speaker that pictures up. Uh, that picks up such a, a small area, knowing camcorders and video cameras. Um, so you you a lot of these things that you see out there. These things people are reacting to something. They're not. They're not reacting to nothing, so they're hearing this noise. So you've heard this noise that sounds like a chair being dragged or dropped or whatever. 
Um, and you know you're the only ones because I know the scary. When you do a scary, literally they lock you in. They turn up to cook your breakfast in the morning, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is the best breakfast ever. I must uh, anybody <laughs> listening. Get your chance, go to Scared because they do the best breakfast ever. When you've been up all night, you want you want something fatty, unhelpful, <laughs> eat bread, loads of brown sauce, and that they do the best things ever. But yeah, you you do all this and you hear this noise. So do you, do you then do you then go up or do you come back down or do you stay there for a minute or what? Well, I think Lee, you went upstairs. Up, you went up first. Yes. <laughs> Because you, you had the paranormal drop face. I did. <laughs> and I, and I, I ran up. But the, hot, the, the thing is, you're thinking, well, what am I actually looking for? What if, if a chair's been moved into the middle of the, the room, then fair enough. If it's just been picked up or dropped, then, you know, I'm not going to know exactly mm. what it was. But, you know, it was definitely a, a big thump. I must admit, we, we, we had something similar uh, when we were there. And there was only three of us in the whole building. And we were downstairs, and um, we'd just come downstairs, and we were getting activity in the in the main bar area. And then all of a sudden, we heard this almighty bang, which sounded like it was directly above us. It would have been in the main bar area near the fire. Would have been room two, because um, mm. obviously room one has the the one where you go down into the bathroom. Room two um, potentially could be room the the little room, but. Um, you know, when when in that location and you're sitting in, you're sitting there, you know where what's above you. So, yeah, yeah, and obviously it's like with the scary den because obviously I've been there as myself. Um, yeah. It's old flooring as well, in it, so it's you see through you it. Can, you see, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know about that one as well, and I'm scared of heights, so I was like, no, not looking through that gap. <laughs> <laughs> So that's probably yeah, my- you do sort of think, like, any second now I'm going to fall through. Yeah. yeah, so that's probably why, obviously, the banks were so loud as well, because obviously the flooring, whereas maybe if it was, like, a newish building, you wouldn't hear it as loud. Well, when, you, when you've got soundproofing, et cetera, and yeah. uh, potential flooring, but when you've got holes that you can see through, it's a bit like the ancient ram when you go up into the loft in the ancient ram. And literally, it's just plasterboard put on beams, and you think this thing has been there for donkeys. You don't have the moisture into it, or whatever. You could be going through to the the bishop's room within one or two steps. So it's 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 quite amazing. So, would you say Skeridin? Obviously, you had this obviously bang. Um, what other locations have you you guys investigated? Uh, well, the ancient ramen. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, East Drive. We did. The, we've done that a couple of times, and the last time we're spending five nights there. We spent the the week there. Um, Alex, Ashrow uh, yes. Prison, Derby Jail, Woodchester Mansion. Yeah. Woodchester oh. Mansion. So you you guys have been uh, been around the circuit of yeah. of the some of the the most interesting locations that the UK has to offer. If you could pick one of those locations that you think mm, you want to go back and there's something else you, you want to go back for, where would it be? Oh, we keep going back you, to the scary you, inn. You, you. <laughs> keep going back. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, because you, you were only there recently, haven't you? A couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we keep going back because I can honestly say every single time we've been, We've always caught, you know, there's always little bits here and there, but there's usually one really good bit, and we think, okay, that's like either a Class A EVP or, you know, you can clearly hear a voice there or a noise. So I love the place. I absolutely adore it. I think it's fantastic. I've done, I've done it, what, three, three, three or four times, and I must admit um, we, we had stuff that happened at, messed around with equipment and deleted footage in front of us while we were watching it. It then said it was deleted and nobody was touching the laptop. Um, or, and thermal imaging images that just deleted with by itself. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's something there. Um, I, do, I personally don't like room one with, with the, um, the sofa and then the, the, the steps down into the bathroom. I don't like that particular room. I quite like it. I had a nice bath in there. 
I had to film myself just in case anything happened, obviously. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is, there is that. Cover all angles. <laughs> so, um, just so there's three, there's three of you guys. Is, is that the whole team, or is there a couple more of you, or is it literally just us. these three? Just us. Just us. Kind of the few that are better in a, in a weird way because you just got a lot less chance of evidence being contaminated. Yeah. I quite agree. The smaller numbers you have, the, the exactly the, the the less chances of contamination. So there's three of you. What roles do you take on in an investigation? So I mainly camera lady, <laughs> um, camera bloke. <laughs> I think I think we all do kind of the same roles. We all do calling out. We all do because we've all got our own camera and like we've got face cams as well so that if we do tr pick up a voice or something like that we can then look back to see if it was one of ourselves making mm -hmm. that sound um i wouldn't say we have our own individual roles I'd, I, to me i think we all work together we work, all work well and we all if one of us has an idea we'll pitch it to each other and we'll all agree whether we want to do it and we all ha always have um, like a camera facing us as well as a camera facing out. Yeah, that's, just, that's, yeah. one, that's one, one sort of evidence yeah. you can get yeah. is on the cam on the camera. Yeah, um, that's that's one thing I, I've noticed when I've worked with you. you. You've got you've got cameras pointing at every possible angle, <laughs> <Yeah. every> <laughs> person, um, and that I think, as they say, you you see people say you see this thing happen on a, on a video and you think i wish i had more multiple camera angles yeah. you guys are literally yeah. like you say you have a you have a camera in your hand you then have a head cam whatever body cam or whatever so you're covering everything yeah mm. everything yeah that's what well, i found again let go i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> sorry go on glee and then i'll say afterwards go on oh so i was just gonna say like the face cams are becoming valuable just because if we do pick up on a voice, we can prove, look, it's not one of us. And the lock-off camera is giving you the wide angle. If something moves, again, we can prove it's not one of us. Mm. Mm. That's what I found really interesting about you guys, because I think you're like on the, the you're the first, obviously, because I watched a few of your YouTube videos. Like only twenty minutes of each, because they were too long. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> but that's what I found obviously interesting like obviously it's good that you've all got a night vision camcorder each a face camera each and then obviously you've got that lock off camera which is view an entire view of the room where you are because then obviously when it goes on to YouTube and you're reviewing it at least if then you capture something on video you can look at it from like I've noticed obviously when you did the evidence review you went looked at Corinne, yeah, Corinne's camera on there, Lee's camera on there, Alex's camera on there to try and obviously pick point where the actual year for this, you know, activity happened. And I think that's a good idea, you know, because then obviously people can't be like, well, it was you, because yeah. you guys, which is what great is, you've got Thanks. proof that, you know, all of you are accounted for basically because you're a free yeah. person team. Sam's brought up a great point is, and I think this is what I enjoy um, about watching your videos and obviously working with you guys. Um, obviously, I've not worked with Lee, but I've worked with Alex and Corinne, um, is the, the way that you cover all, all possible things. Because I know I've seen stuff on out there where somebody went, I wish we had another angle. I wish we could do that. And you guys have got that. So you've got you've got the different angles. You've got cameras pointing at others, and I think that's uh, that's good. Particularly when you've got three of you, you've got three possible cameras. Plus you've got static cameras. Plus you've got the body cameras, etc. So you're covering everything possible. So if you capture something, whether it's a sound that appears, um, that you can then review back the footage and then look at each individual camera. You've got um, the possibility of picking up EVs on one type of camera. That, not, that aren't going to appear on others, etc. Yeah. So the way the way you the way you go about it, I think, is really really refreshing to see. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the one thing I'd say, Carl, as well is it's great that we do all this, and but we do have moments, and Lee will confirm this, that we're like setting up, so we're moving cameras around the noise, and then suddenly when we look back on it, it's we get an EVP, and 
<laughs> it's like yeah. why <laughs> we're looking at it in ourselves and we're saying why haven't we got a camera up what where's the camera <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I, everyone it's very hard it. I'm so <laughs> trying to because <laughs> um, when I'm doing the editing if I if we capture a voice or something and we all just set it up. I'm thinking, oh, great. Now we've got to try and zoom in to show our faces. Because <laughs> we've literally just set it up. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I completely agree. Because obviously sometimes you capture something. And, but you, if you could cover every square inch of a location, you've got cables running everywhere. You've got thousands of cameras pointing in every possible area to capture everything. And it's not just viable. It's, you, you can't do that. Um, you haven't got a, obviously a big budget for the TV, so you can't really do that. So, but you guys do it because I've watched a couple of your um, YouTube uh, videos where you you come up, you introduce it, you say this is what's going to happen, but then you also then come back on and say, right, this is if you look at this, we're going to split it down, we're going to slow it down, and we're going to give you a couple of seconds of here, we're going to give you a couple of seconds of that, and you're actually and unlike other people that I've seen on there that do stuff like this. They just show you the video and then they put up a little script. Oh, the EVP was, mm. it said Stan or whatever. You guys, you leave it open to whoever's viewing it. It's their own interpretation. Yeah. And that was Corinne's idea. Mm. Yeah. We shouldn't be telling people what we hear. You know, that's why we thought, well, okay, we'll just put up voice or noise. And then later on, we'll do a review video and say, this is what we thought it was. And you're right, it's up to the individual watching it to say what they heard. Mm. No, I think I think that's a good way of doing it because as soon as you, you give somebody, we hit, we think we hear Stan or we, we think you hear this, that and the other, you, the first thing the, brain, the human brain does, it, it, it listens out and puts two and two together and comes up with six. So you're thinking mm-hmm. you're hearing exactly what, you're being told you're supposed to hear or you're supposed to see. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they yeah. You, I've got to say, your evidence reviews are like amazing. <laughs> the, <laughs> ones, the ones I've seen, do, like Paul says, because because like obviously I listened to like a few, like I say, a few of your videos earlier, and obviously before you guys even put up went did the replay, I heard the voice, and obviously I've got on my notepad here what I heard, you know. <laughs> But it's that's the you know because like call obviously like everyone will say call and like call says everyone will agree on this if they are put up on YouTube you know on a video what you mm. what you think oh we've heard this and obviously people are just gonna yeah it's the same and obviously I think it happens as well if you're on an investigation like I don't know I'm so, I don't think you guys do like live EVP reviews do you do, do you just like leave it till you do all the editing. We've started to do live EVP reviews, um, but sometimes when I'm doing, well, if I'm doing the edit, just for time's sake, I'll just come out. Because if we don't capture anything, you know, I won't put it in there. Because if we're investigating for three hours, four hours, you know, I've got to put something out. (laughs) You're cutting and you're putting it together for a video. Do you then go, so you're not going to put that in, but then do you take what you think potentially could have been something you think it's not clear enough for a video do you then go back and then review that further I, I, for me I tend to review it as I'm going along and if I find something that I think well hang on what is that I will I'll uh, I have to get the video I have to get that little bit I put it into my laptop I clean the audio up I listen to it again if something's there it'll be included yeah um, if it isn't there, then I'll go, okay, fair enough. I'll just keep it out. Okay. Okay. What about yourself, uh, Corinne and Alex? Do you, when you do review, do you do exactly the same? Um, pretty much, yeah. Lee does the main sort of edit. Um, so if he sort of finds anything, he'll bring it round to us to sort of double check it and review well. And sometimes I hear something completely different to what Lee's hearing as well, which is... <laughs> quite funny and that's sort of the same yeah. with Alex I think so yeah, yeah disagree I think that, and agree sometimes but. No, I, th- I think that's completely natural because people everybody's ears are different so you all yeah. hear a different thing mm-hmm. you all hear a different sound levels etc so um you will hear something completely different so that's actually natural because I do that when I work with MJ she thinks she hears one thing I'm thinking I hear another thing but then yeah. when we review it back we actually hear a completely different thing at the time. <laughs> and then, then you put it put headphones on and you hear something completely different again yeah, yeah you know it's it's weird 
Yeah, when you that's the thing about um, live EVP um, review, you're literally hearing it literally, as you say, through earphones or noise cancelling headphones. So you hear something, you then review it, you're hearing it in a split second, and then your brain is obviously then processing it. So I find that very interesting because that gives you a point of thing to when you go back and review it, you can then look at it and think, okay, we knew we, we captured something here, let's look at that in more detail. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you guys, how long have you guys been going for the <coughs> team of three? As the group? Yeah. Oh, God. About four years. Yeah, it was like 2015, wasn't it? Yeah. So you've, you've, you've obviously done loads of locations, as you as you indicated earlier. Um, what bits of, say, for instance, I know there's there's people listening to the show because I'm a complete tech ge- uh, geek, and I know people listening to me talking about equipment and various different like cameras do you use or what digital recorders can you give a, qu- a quick overview of what sort of equipment actually use on, on your events or your investigations well as we oh, say to we you, Alex. Got, yeah, like, <laughs> we, we've got um, normally we've got like our face cancer our study cancer just like gopros that being altered to accept infrared um Quite a lot of our early videos still used old-fashioned DV cameras. Um, I know Lee upgraded it this year to a <clears throat> I've upgraded, as you've seen, Cole, to mm-hmm. my camera as well um, and that. Um, other equipment we use, we've got a spirit box. We use the Afterlight application yeah. on computer, um, K2 meters, um Depending on the venue, another one that we've started this year is the multiple um, microphone recording. So yeah. I've got a, a, I think it's a 16-channel sound desk. So I can actually rig microphones to almost like four in a room if needed and record that session. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, be, yeah, I, I, I've done work with that, and obviously on yeah. the stuff I've done, the, the what we call uh, what we do it with the 360 EVP, where you've basically got microphone <laughs> recording at the same time. That's, that's always very interesting because you can see the sound waves off the different microphones. Yeah. To go on, um, you asked me a question because I'm reviewing some different types of digital recorder. The one yeah. you mentioned, um, yeah, has some drawbacks. Um, I'll I'll let you know the full review, but yeah, there's yeah. Uh, has some very good positives, but there are a couple of drawbacks. Being a task cam, um, as they always do, um, but uh, it's it the stuff's coming through really really nicely. So, but that's I'll, I'll talk to you. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's well. Yeah. Like, uh, like you said, we've we use some um, EVP. So Lee and Corin and myself have. A digital recorder that we quite often one of us or all of us will be using um and again from a portable point of view um the task cam fill recorder so i can actually rig my <coughs> without having power supply which i think when we were down at drake like you might see me rig it in the base room yeah 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 yeah, yeah i was a little bit rushed because i was obviously a yeah. ro- i rove a lot i rove uh, arrive. <laughs> arrived quite late at Drogler. So I literally arrived and went straight in and, and wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were a bit under the weather as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I was a bit under, and all of a sudden I'm into Drogler, which is not <laughs> one of my most favourite locations. But, <laughs> and then I'm asked to walk around in the dark and do stuff and things like that. So <laughs> Drogler was amazing. Drogler, I think. Oh, every time we go there, we get, we get something different and. There was times, obviously, as you guys know, there was times we said we wouldn't go back and then you get drawn back into it and then you get other things that happen. And I think that's every like every location you go into, you get, all, you get that with any I location. I that with East Drive, definitely. I mean, after spending five nights, I was like, oh, well, I've had enough. Let's go come back. Maybe it's a collab. And then after reviewing evidence, it's like, I need to go back now. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned East Drive, which is the next subject I was actually going to bring on. So you're great. You're a great co-host, Corin. Oh, so, <laughs> questions. Uh, so you guys, I know you guys have done East Drive many times, but you did a you did this 
five days and you've done several other investigations there and you've you've done some videos and you've captured some interesting stuff on video mm. so tell me about why you wanted to spend five days in the alleged most haunted house in the uk because i wanted the summer holiday last year <laughs> <laughs> And I hear Ponty. I hear Ponty Frank's lovely this time here. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, it's alleged to be the scariest place ever. We really, really wanted to get sort of a feel for the place, and we thought if we sort of acted as though we sort of lived there, um, sort of going about our day, uh, maybe some things, sort of more things, would happen. Um, which uh, it did. When you're there, it seemed very quiet, but. It's just when you review it all, it's like, okay, there's quite a lot going on now. Um, I, t- I think um, yeah. <laughs> we'll all agree it's like you watch something on like a show that's done East Drive or somewhere else, uh-huh. and they've recorded it the whole night, and they've got to compress it down into a 40-minute thing, and then you actually realise it's five hours, actually, what you're watching and stuff. And I think that's why we wanted to do the five nights, to actually make sure we cover everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, how long do you guys actually spend spend investigating at one like one night? How long did you end up doing it for? Um, at however long we are allowed to be there. So, or when tired, they sets in. Really, um, I think some of our long ones skewed in with it's normally like two, three o'clock in the morning, and we're still going. Uh, Ashwell Prison, which we've done recently, we were there till one, two o'clock. Yeah. But while we were at East Drive, um, we sort of acted like we more lived there. So, like, during the day, mm. we just sort of chill out and maybe sit in silence, maybe do a little bit of calling out. But we did mm. sort of go out for a bit and then come back. Um, but at night, we definitely did sort of a lot more investigating. Um, but we just managed to start it a lot earlier well, we, and carry on a lot later if we wanted to. So it was good to have that freedom. Because <laughs> we would do a live stream every night, wouldn't we, for about yes. an hour, two hours? Yes. Yeah, we would. And yeah. then that we'd stay for about three hours. So, yeah, lots of footage to go through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, especially with the amount of cameras, that is that is a lot of footage to go through, the amount of cameras you guys have. Because yeah. I think yeah. that's what people don't realise is, yeah, you might have seven cameras on an investigation and you're on there for three hours then you realize that's seven hours per camera (laughs) so uh you you have to that yeah and it's it people think you know you can just gloss over it but you miss so much if you gloss you've got to watch each camera for seven hours or however long the investigation is each camera go through it and go through it and go through it so it that's the 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 non-glamorous side of this of what we do is the is the review side but some but it's also the most exciting part of it yeah it can be Uh, you know if we've got a lock off camera on some stairs for three hours watching that you, you know, it is a test of patience. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just watching stairs for me. It is a test of patience. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but I, it's worth it if you capture something cool. I, I did it recently. I had um, I had eight CCTV cameras that were rolling for five hours apiece. Um, and, yeah, going Jeez. through that for five hours, each camera, yeah, yeah. I, I I almost wanted to like um, find somewhere and jump out of a window afterwards, but you have to do it. You have to do it because you got to do that. So you, yeah. you think you've got eight cameras, five hours. <clears throat> then you've got on top of that, you've got EVP recorders, you've got personal cameras, you've got this sort of, and you think, oh. but you've got to do it because that split second you switch off when you're not reviewing it. You could capture the most amazing EVP, or the you could have somebody which kind of sort. Yeah. Well, I mean, this kind of leads into that door thing. Exactly. I'm you know, she's wearing um, one too. Um, anybody that's not seen it, we're going to post a <laughs> link into into the chat room because uh, I'd like to see what people. Because I've looked at it, and initially. When I saw it, I didn't see anything. But then you, when you slow it down, you do see something. 
And then I'm thinking to myself, because basically, if I just if I just outline for anybody that's um, not seen it, but we'll post the link in the chat room and we'll post the link afterwards. Anybody listening on the, on catch up on this, you guys are sat there. Um, you got Alex in front of the camera, um, sitting in front of the little girl's room. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, you got Kareem next Let's, to you, just yeah. off camera. Yeah. Lee at the top of the stairs filming. The other two. The other two. Yeah. Um, there's nobody else in the house because we know there's only three of you in the house, um, and you guys are, are just chatting and doing, you know, talking about the live stream, etc. And then you suddenly, I think, I think Cree mentions, oh, I hope we got that. The doors just opened. Yeah. Um, well, I actually say, I actually say, um, oh come on, if you're that bad. Surely, if you're that powerful, you've got you could, you've got the power to open a door or close a door, and then the door opens. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that could have been that couldn't have been better timed. No, no, I must admit the, the way you the way you say it and the way you see it on film. Yeah. And then, yes, you do see the door open. You see, there's a there's a there's a break of the door because you go you go in close to the door, and then you pan back out. But what? until somebody mentioned it to you when you go on slow motion you see what looks like um a black shadow halfway up the door not as all the way up but halfway up just below the where the handle is a pivot as the door opens yeah is that about right did i sum it up yeah right? yeah you did <laughs> So, An odd missed thing. Yeah. All, all missed I was it. concentrating on with the head was like, oh, the door opened and that was it. And I thought, well, that's it. I've included that clip and that was it. And when the eagle eyed viewer pointed it out, it was like, oh my God, how the hell did I miss that? And it, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Some of passes, some of passes through that door. You really see something fast. Um, the, only, the only thing that me personally, and this is only my personal view of it, when I watched it, and I watched it about a dozen times and I was like the first time I watched it I was thinking maybe it was the alt- as you've gone in close you've changed the angle of where you're yeah. filming yeah. from mm-hmm. and potentially the distortion behind has changed but then when you look at it when you slow it down frame by frame you clearly show it comes into shot and leaves shot so that's when I was yeah. like okay that's more interesting than what I thought was when potentially you could have you could have been filming, then you move slightly over, and you get a different angle yeah. of the gap and the, the what's behind changes its position. So, but yeah, it, it knowing what one, what was in that room. Sorry, so go on, Alex. Sorry, I was going to say, like, literally, when we looked at it, we're, before we even put it up there for everyone else, we were like sit, going through. Right, is it because the, the camera moved, so it's cast a each change to the shadow angle. Can we remember what what was in the room, where it was, what could do it, and stuff? And we can't explain. No. Um, well, we, we know we keep... in that room there was only the there was only the pram with a little doll in it. There was no the rug, there was no rug on the floor. No. no. Bed. No. Because that's that's what my initial thoughts was because it was. It was below the handle, like yeah. below, below. I'm just thinking, did you when you when you moved angle slightly, did you then pick up the rug and it came in and came out of focus? Like if there was yeah. no rug in it, um, yeah. I personally think that there's, there's definitely movement that goes from one direction to another. You see it when you slow it down, when you've got when you slow it down to the the two seconds and that particular clip and you slow it down and you show you see movement it does it does look like it moves um and i think it's it's a it's a great hit i it's wish great, we great... Had opened the door and showed everyone there was nobody in there but uh-huh. at the time we just didn't think of it and it's i'm absolutely kicking myself well, that's why i want to go back to see if we get anything like that again oh there's only so many but it was alive, yeah. so we couldn't even have but, like. But even during the live, all we time. had at that time was the fact that the door had opened again. Yeah. So we and weren't we, even we're so, looking at this shadow. We're so naive. It was sort of like thinking, well, we're live, and everybody that's watching us knows us. 
And I know that there's only us three in here. <laughs> you know. Be naive. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> well, it is. It's like, you know, every, everybody that's watching us knows us. So yeah, they know we're much. on our own. Yeah, they so, do. you know. Yeah. But, yeah, in hindsight, you know, we should have gone in. But that, that's, that's what, when you, put, when you put evidence out on social media... Sadly, that's something that you have to take. Um, yeah, yeah, because there are people, there are like, there are people out there that will just comment from a keyboard warrior position. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But you know what? The reason I do this isn't for everybody else. At the end of the day, it's for me, and yeah. I want to know what's out there. Yeah. I don't care if somebody in America is going to moan at me about. No, nope. you know, there's I mean? a huge Whatever, difference like... between. I was like, there's a huge difference between sitting at home in your nice comfy sofa with the heating on, washing it, and actually being there and experiencing yeah. it. Mm. Totally different feeling. So, Ooh. you know. No, no, no I, I quite agree. I think I think um, when you're actually out on an investigation and you're doing stuff and you're getting stuff that actually happens, there's a different buzz that, that that's happens. Um, and I know, Kareem, yeah. you were there on... UK Haunted live when we captured that thing when we used the human um, uh, when we first started off the show when we were putting our hands on the that man, that hand bit of kit that I box. Box. yeah yeah the human spirit box yeah, and box. we got that and you, when you we all heard what we were on the time saying where we were but when we played it back and listened to it we actually heard the full name of the yeah, there was more... what it used to be and it's clear as a bell it's awesome and that yeah. bit of, that bit of equipment that we came up with that night that was just a bit of tube with with whatever could put in through through a speaker so it was it's not like you can it's amazing so um so you guys great footage you put it well together but obviously that comes into what yourself um alex and kareen do because you obviously do photography and video editing yeah. and stuff like that yeah. so that comes in and by the way um we will also post on is the voting still open kareen no, no. that closed <laughs> i didn't oh, win oh. <laughs> that closed ages ago i'm gonna give you a plug to send everybody oh, thank you though <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go I'm in the finals. That's good enough for me. <laughs> uh, when, when, when it, is that like a public vote on the finals, or is it? Yeah, yeah, it was a public yeah. vote. Once that, yeah. once that comes up, drop us a message. Let me know, and when we do a show, we'll put it out there. We'll get. Unfortunately, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, that that, oh, that's, that that's even been done. That's all been done. It's all been mm. done now. <laughs> 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 See you later. You finish. She, she has another technology. Take, take off. It's fine. Corinne <laughs> has some. Corinne has something else to announce, though, don't you, Corinne? Oh yeah. Um, the spiritual fair that um, Karen Frey is holding on the 28th of September. I'll be doing a talk on photography and the paranormal. Um, so yeah, if you want to come along and see that, you can. But if not, that's fine too. Whereabouts is that? <laughs> it's uh, is it Worcester Cricket? Was um was the Karen, Karen's in the chat room? So you saw Karen all letters there. Of of September. September. Yeah, so okay. that's, what's, that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I know she wanted to announce, didn't you, Karen? So <laughs> yeah, come along to it. It's going to be good. There's um some good store holders and things there, and I am going to ask um if pe- if people do go, they can bring some photos with them as well for me to look at. Um, of apparitions that they might have caught or anything like that, and we can just have a look and have a chat about them. Well, no, that's 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 really good because having somebody that takes a photograph, seeing they've captured them, and then get somebody that knows photography and knows what everything to do with photography. That's that's a great bit of um, there's, that is brilliant for people to get that on board. So yeah, so any we'll post all the links in the chat room. Get on board because these are the sort of events we don't have enough of these events in the UK. It brings like minded people together and it's brilliant. And we need more of these events and we need more like fairs, we need more conventions. We need to basically, we need to basically be hot on the feet of the Americans that have like 15 a weekend or whatever. We need, these, <laughs> we, need these events. So we need these events in the UK because I'm very bored of weekends, so I need something to go. <laughs> <laughs> so um lee just just quick before we wrap it up because i know we're coming up to the hour um 
what are you looking forward to? Where, what have you got coming up next? Where where are you going to be? Have you got anything you can let us know about? Well, I mean, there's still a fair few videos to be uploaded onto the channel that we filmed this year. So mm-hmm. those are going to be coming out uh, over the next sort of few months. Um, I think next year we've got, you know, a, a couple of things, you know, that we've sort of done here and there and, you know, maybe a, maybe a little split off thing where okay. one of us goes somewhere, one of us goes somewhere else, and one of us goes somewhere else, and we always do it in one good, night. Always good to always good to split people up. I I hate yeah. I've, I've done it and I I love doing it, but uh, yeah, it's always good because you get you get the human emotions as well. Because if you're in a location when it's dark, it's dank, it's horrible. You have got a camera mm-hmm. pointing at you. You get you get the true emotions on your face, and sometimes it, that's sometimes the best footage. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I mean, when you got your mates with you, you get a bit braver. But when you're mm. on your own, it's like, okay, now I have to actually really, really try. <laughs> so Lee, Lee's basically just been re- going to be reviewing footage, putting out videos, and then potentially go being mean and <laughs> sending people off into lonely locations. Oh, yeah. What about yeah. yourself, <laughs> and Alex? What what are, what have you what have you got planned coming up? What you want? What you're looking forward to? Well, all three of us are going to be at um, Safe Power Club. Yay! Of course. Um, there, there's some American trip I know about. Oh, that could be something to do with going to a certain location in New Orleans, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it might be. No, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Um, so. We're going to do some um, collabs as well um, with another group called the Ouija Brothers. Um, they're really cool. Um, if you are listening, look them up. Um, so yeah, we've got that sort of coming up. We're just trying to finalise some dates for that as well. So, yeah. all all good, all busy, all good. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah it's great. And we've got um, collab with um, Keep Paranormal as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, Keep Paranormal. Yeah, that one. So. And you guys did a brilliant job on the on the UK haunted live event. Um, when you. You were doing that, um, yeah, <laughs> you, were, you were a great part of the team, and obviously Corinne got to. Um, Sit next to uh, Janet upstairs for a little while on her own. Yes. Yeah. She, she was rather um, excited, I think, when she volunteered herself to go up there. <laughs> I can't do the not you didn't see anybody else wanted to volunteer for us. <laughs> but then, before they even knew about it, that was mine. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that was quite, that was good. Good avenue behind, and obviously seeing the foot, and obviously we've posted some pictures and um the great work so if you have an event that you need good photography get in contact with alex and corinne because they're, they're very very good they capture everything they're good good behind the scenes so yeah and they know the industry as well so that's always a bonus thank you <laughs> uh, what we'll do we'll, we'll post all social media and um links and everything else into the chat room and then obviously into the Facebook group, et cetera. So everybody's got them. They want to get in touch with you. But what I would suggest to anybody listening tonight, get onto YouTube, get find, find this 30 East Drive footage of the door and, and comment on it. Find out and see what you think. Because when you see the video, which shows obviously the still bit, you do see. But just yeah, get on there, have a look. It's very, very interesting. These guys, unbelievable capture, and it's great. Um, so, yeah, great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. yeah, on that company, I'll tell you what, this, this hour flies by. This hour absolutely yes. flies by. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it up. Uh, we've been, the hour's coming up. i am probably got Kerry looking at her watch right now going, tap, tap, you're, you're getting close to the mark. Um, I just want to thank uh, you guys. I want to thank Alex, Corinne, and Lee for coming on tonight. Okay. Been really, yeah. we'll definitely get you Thanks back. Thanks, guys, on. for having us. Yeah, we'll definitely get you back on at some point. Um, I'm thinking when we do a review of Sage Paracon because I know both Alex and Corinne are going to be there. So we'll be doing and a Lee. And Lee. We'll and Lee. Be there. Yeah. I'll be there. Oh, oh, you'll see me running around setting speakers up and then finding a darkened room to lie down in. Uh, <laughs> that's probably what I do on um, <laughs> Paragon. Um, but no, we'll, we'll get you on there and get get it from a like a, a punter's point of view. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is always good mm-hmm. because, yeah, anybody out there, um, Sage Paracon probably 
is the best paranormal convention in the UK, most exclusive anyway. So um, we'll, we'll post links on there and that. And I know everybody is so looking forward to this year. Um, so I want to thank you again. Thank you for coming on. Um, thank and, you. And, um, been a pleasure. I uh, want to thank my host, Sam. She's just had to nip off a second to sort something out. Um, so I'm going to wrap up the show. I'm not very used to, I'm not used to the wrap up part of the show. So if I get this wrong, um, <laughs> it, 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 um, so thank you guys, guys, for coming in. We'll be back on next Thursday. Um, the subject of our next radio show is a bit of a surprise, but I'm sure Carrie will tell you more on the wrap up on Monday during the day when we do that. Uh, but once again, thank you very much. Uh, anything you've liked, enjoyed, or you want to hear something or you want to discuss anything, get in touch on our social media channels. Get in touch. We'll, we are looking, we're open to look at any possible aspect uh, we will do. If you want a guest, particular guest, or you want to come on yourself, get in touch. We, we would love to, we would love to, hear. we have spots available. So once again, thank you guys for coming on. Um, and I would just like to say thank you very much, and obviously to my my wonderful co-host Sam. Um, thank you again. Um, we will see you next week, and good night. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.